course, the place where the ancient ones, the Anunnaki, where they went to, to get born and to die, is in fact the center of a fractal capacitor. A very simple example. If a Cherokee uh, Indian shaman is looking for a place to die, he will find a little hill that's fractal to the mountain behind it. And that fractality becomes the sacred burial ground, and that's a place from which your electric field, your aura, your chi, your ka, your baraka, your boat into the underworld, your charge field, your soul, can non-destructively unpack and therefore take memory with you at death. It's absolutely critical that we stop being schizophrenic to think that our spiritual immortality is different than the coherence of an electric field. It's because we don't understand that that we have these stupid people going to hospitals to die where the electrosmog could scramble a chicken egg and you don't have a prayer of getting out of there with your spirit memory intact. So the hygiene for successful birth and successful death exquisitely depends upon understanding fractal capacitance and therefore biologic architecture is the beginning of learning how to help people die and get born successfully. We have some other examples. We'll show you the pictures here. We have Vestine Bortange, this uh, pentagonal shaped wonderful geometry in, in Netherlands where you see that the growth force, literally the green making power, is, is compressed at the center specifically because water, land, water, land, concentric rings, five-sided shape, compress charge. In the same way that Atlantis and Amsterdam were designed, these were charge compressors. And we use the example of a stupa that actually a stupa is literally the shape of a capacitor. And there was gold there. What is gold? A fractal capacitor. So a stupa in itself is a study of biologic architecture because it's a study in learning how to build a living capacitor that can serve and cause to thrive biology inside.